This is China Briefing. We bring you the latest content on China's current affairs, economy and society from authoritative global media, as well as authoritative and exclusive analysis. If our content is of value to you, please subscribe to China Briefing. China's top official in religious administration investigated. Sing Tao Daily reports that Chui Meohu, who was promoted to Vice Minister of the Central United Front Work Department and Director of the State Religious Affairs Bureau in May last year, is under investigation by the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection. It is reported that he is being investigated mainly because of his work in Yunnan. The company's main goal is to provide a comprehensive range of products and services to the public. On February 10, he sent a condolence message on behalf of the State Religious Affairs Bureau to Venerable Vincent Tsing Yun, who passed away in Taiwan's FO Guangshan. In addition, the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection reported yesterday that Zheng Hong, former Deputy Director of the Standing Committee of the Chongqing Municipal People's Congress and former Deputy Secretary of the Party Group, was investigated for allegedly committing serious violations of discipline and law making him the first senior provincial minister to fall after the closing of the National People's Congress. Here is the China briefing. Xi Jinping's mediation. Foreign policy reports that China's diplomatic and economic progress in the Middle East has raised concerns in the West that Beijing is becoming the new global superpower. However, Saudi Arabia has gained an edge in the geopolitical game, especially with the resumption of Chinese-brokered diplomatic relations between Saudi Arabia and Iran. With U.S. and European commentators concerned that Beijing is consolidating its position at the expense of the United States, Saudi Arabia is using the ancient tools of weak states to compete with major powers for its own benefit. It is only a matter of time before China steps in to fill the void left by indecisive U.S. foreign policy in the region. While the West has imposed sanctions on countries perceived as bad guys, China has eschewed such policies. Instead, Beijing has demonstrated a see-no-evil approach and has helped to build a more pragmatic foundation on which to resolve conflicts. Thus, by advancing diplomatic relations between Iran and Saudi Arabia, China has shifted the Middle East paradigm closer to a solution. The West's obsession with bad actors and threats has stripped it of its credibility in reaching a peaceful solution. China's approach to the Middle East is seen as so productive that it is now being touted as a possible alternative to U.S. power in the region. While the U.S. has lost credibility with the Palestinians and their Arab allies, China seeks to fill the peace-building void by becoming a dominant global superpower in every sense of the word, diplomatic, financial and military. Here is the China Briefing. What China's Baby Woes Mean for Its Economy The BBC reports that China's workforce is shrinking, its population is aging and its birth rate is falling, creating a demographic crisis that threatens to derail the country's economic growth. China's population has been declining since 2022, when its birth rate slowed to a 60-year low. The average age in China is now 38 with retirement age at 60 for men and 55 for women. With nearly one-fifth of the population over 60, the country's pension fund could be depleted by 2035. In 2022, China launched its first private pension scheme in 36 cities. The online youth, lie flat, movement is also growing. It calls on workers to refuse to fight for professional success, promising to escape the pressures of life and work in a fast-paced capitalist society. Here is the China Briefing. As China unhooks, Western companies still rely on Chinese proprietary technology. Nikkei Asia reports that companies seeking to relocate production out of China still rely on the expertise of Chinese workers. Despite the geopolitical tensions, Chinese workers have become a valuable resource for many companies. Tesla's Shanghai plant has more than 200 engineers helping to expand production of the Model S and other electric vehicles at its Fremont, California facility. 
This reliance on Chinese workers can be difficult for companies seeking to diversify their manufacturing base, especially when countries like India and Vietnam can't meet the demand for skilled workforce. As the trend toward production diversification continues, companies may have to focus on investing in worker training and development programs to ensure that they have access to a pool of skilled workforce outside of China. Translated with www.dpel.com slash translator, free version. This is China Briefing. Finding a buyer for TikTok may not be so easy. The New York Times reports that experts say few companies in the tech industry or elsewhere may be willing or able to buy TikTok. Analysts say that at $50 billion or more, the social media platform is too expensive for many, and that owning a social media company adds to the difficulty, including how to handle harmful or inappropriate content streams. While it may be difficult for competitors like Snap to buy the platform, many affordable tech giants may avoid it for fear of being the target of antitrust claims. It's also unclear how the platform will be separated from Bitmap, or whether it will be approved by the Chinese government. Earlier this week, TikTok announced that the Biden administration was pushing the company's Chinese owners to sell the app or face a possible ban. TikTok has been a target of Trump and the Biden administration as politicians have begun to worry that the platform could put sensitive user data on Americans, such as their location information, in the hands of the Chinese government. More than two dozen states have banned the app on their state-owned devices, and there is several pieces of federal legislation aimed at banning the platform. While the company has weighed its options, and its CEO plans to testify before the House Energy and Commerce Committee, uncertainty about the platform's future has affected its U.S. employees, whose morale has fallen rapidly as state bans and legislation against the company have gained traction. Experts' comments this week suggest that the debate around TikTok will continue, with no clear solution or deal seemingly imminent. Here is the China briefing. U.S. military relies on China-controlled minerals. Foreign policy reports that the reliability of the world supply chain was painfully clear last year when the COVID-19 pandemic struck. The U.S. and other developed countries struggled to obtain personal protective equipment and other medical supplies as the countries that make most of the world's goods closed their factories due to the blockade. When Congress discussed the potential impact of supply chains on military readiness, it decided to make them less vulnerable. In March, a group of senators introduced legislation aimed at boosting domestic production of rare earth elements, materials used by the U.S. military to build many of its advanced weapons platforms. The bill would create a $1.75 billion fund to finance mining and processing facilities and require the Defense Department to evaluate how it uses the minerals. Here is the China briefing. China disappointed by ChatGPT debut. The New York Times reports that search giant Baidu has launched a Chinese-language algorithm that generates human-like text, but demonstrations at product launches must be pre-recorded. The robot, named Ernie, was created in response to the success of OpenAI's GPT-3, which many say is much more advanced, the robot representative said via knowledge integration enhancement. Baidu shares fell 10%. U.S. regulators are calling for new controls on artificial intelligence and technology aimed at allowing humans and machines to physically and cognitively integrate to create competition for dominance in the field. Transparency is also one of the challenges when it comes to regulating large technology companies, as it is key to building trust in the systems used. Here is the China briefing. China is adjusting its outreach to African audiences. According to an article in Foreign Policy, China's model of outreach to Africa is part of the country's broader strategy for the global south. While Africa's 1.48 billion people, which will grow to 2.48 billion by 2050, are an important part of that community, some indicators suggest that China is lagging behind the United States in terms of favorability in China. 
The article says Beijing is working to develop messaging and strengthen its ability to reach African audiences. African interlocutors have been cultivated to promote the country's image and interests, but official media ratings for Africa are low and there is little overlap with mainstream African media themes. President Xi Jinping says China is developing its soft power and propaganda capabilities by creating a credible, lovable and respectable image of China. Sarah Cook of Freedom House says that between 2017 and 2020, these efforts to shape media content and narratives around the world have expanded dramatically, affecting every region and multiple languages. We estimate that Beijing spends billions of dollars a year on its outreach and censorship efforts, the organization said in 2022. China's hunt is for recognized African journalists and reporters and offers them high-paying jobs, but investigative journalism is not welcome if it gives a negative impression of China or its partners. Keep up with the latest China-related news, analysis and policy briefings from around the world with China Briefing. Our team aggregates, synthesizes and summarizes the most important information from a variety of sources, including the media, think tanks, government agencies and industry experts. Our mission is to provide you with easily accessible and highly valuable information that is tailored to your specific area of interest. We understand the importance of keeping abreast of the latest developments related to China and aim to make this information accessible to our readers. Visit our website at http colon slash slash to join the conversation and learn about the latest news related to China.